Now last week I did a video which was the top five forgiving irons of 2021. Many of you commented that I'd made one vital mistake by missing an iron out that is in my hand right now. I'm going to test it and see if I did make that mistake and should this been in my top five and if so where should it have been? So as a quick reminder my top five as it stands before trying this iron was the Wilson D9 in fifth then in fourth place we had the Ping G425. Third place for me was the Sim Max 2 iron from Taylor Made. Then we had one from Mizuno, it was the 921 Hot Metal. And the top spot for me was with Callaway and their DCB iron. The question is, what is this iron that I'm referring to? So the iron in question is from Titleist and it is the T300. And like I said, many comments suggested that I'd made a big mistake by leaving this out of the top five and uh, I'll soon give you my opinion as to whether or not I did make that mistake. Uh, the reason it wasn't included in the top five was quite simply I hadn't tried the uh, iron so couldn't pass comments on it but I will do that this morning and uh, we'll make our amendments if needed. I think the first thing I will say about the Titleist iron is the quality of the build itself and how it looks. I think it's a real decent don't forget, this is the most forgiving. It generally means that it's a bigger, bulkier package. And sometimes I feel they're not the best looking of clubs, but I do think in this T300 model, they've done a great job aesthetically, certainly in terms of the way it's put together in terms of quality of build. It's tight list, it's gonna have a price tag. It is gonna be put, uh, put together very well. And I think you can clearly see this from the iron. What I wanna talk about is how it looks in terms of an address, which is the next thing. And how bad, in my opinion, if that is a bad thing, is that top line? And does it sit in the dress? Is it just a little bit too bulky? Or have they done a good job like the DCB and managed to get it into a little bit of a compact profile? Right, so from above, it's classic game improvement iron. It is got that thick top line. They've made an effort to sort of chamfer that back edge off, but I don't think it's quite worked because, like I said, you can still see quite a bit of this bulk and mass fairly thick sole and the overall profile like I said relatively big but what I will say doesn't seem massive in terms of its offset it sits quite neutral at address and I'd have no problem with having that one and, uh, and not feeling massively off put when I'm sat and addressing the ball get in Right, we'll be back inside for some dry ball data soon, but I think with dry ball data, what we're probably expecting to see from this is it's gonna go pretty far. It's a strong lofted seven iron, should launch high. The spin number will be the interesting one. Always a criticism on these irons in the past, which I think we've moved on from, is the control element, the flyers and the lack of spin. So we'll be interested, we'll look at that number a bit closer, but for now, it's just a case of taking a few off the turf outside in real conditions getting an idea in terms of how they sort of sound and feel and see what I think general first impressions out here off the grass well first of all real high launching ball that's gone into orbit pretty straight fight felt okay let's try another one oh much better sound much better knock solid swing from myself there the interesting thing for me, first of all, again, is the sort of sound and feel plays a major part in that list that I put together last week. The DCB did particularly well in finishing number one because of that attribute being a forged iron felt really good. But I've got to say, listening to this thing out here, outside, striking a few irons, that feels really good, you know. Really impressed. Three decent balls, similar ball flight on all three. Middle one was definitely the far better struck. Back inside, get some dry ball data, see what it does in terms of that spin number and how much control have we given away from playing this strong lofted seven iron. I've got to admit so far, uh, I'm impressed with what I've seen out there, hitting a few balls, there's a few more uh, with camera off and it was pretty impressive stuff. Love the way it sounds and feels. So ticking all the boxes, but inside for some dry ball data. We'll set up a bit of a virtual hole here as well. Uh, I think we're at Royal Birkdale. We've got 168, uh, which I'll talk about the dry ball data in a little bit, but I've been swinging a sort of uh, this first club test of the day. Uh, club head speed, a little bit slower than normal. So I'm carrying this a little bit less than I would expect to. We're in and around that 160 mark um, is where I've been carrying the ball to. So hence this 168 yard. 
R3, it's uh, at Birkdale. It's a really good clip. Again, it's gone, it's gone as far as I'm concerned, that's straight at the flag as it picked it up. And you can see the towering ball fight is the bit that really interests me. And then let's see what it does in terms of, like I said, only just got there to that 168 flag. So it'll be interesting to see if there are lights in the way there of just what's happening. In fact, I'll go to the laptop, it'll be a bit easy to see. Okay, so yeah, 146 carry. It's been the real interesting thing for me is that I'm launching the ball really, really high. That spin number again, incredible. 6,800 spin for a game improvement iron. Strongly lofted, but those numbers are really looking as though they relate back to almost a traditionally lofted iron. So 150 carry with a seven iron is about that traditional number and then 7,000 spin. That's incredible in terms of what it's doing, but it's not the sort of power bat that I would have expected. Another really good clip, might have pulled that one a little bit left. Probably put a little bit more into that in terms of effort wise and club head speed than we did on the first one. And I've pulled it a little bit down the left hand side, yeah. We're gonna trickle into a back bunker. Let's see what it does in terms of numbers. Again, so yeah, a little bit more, 154 carry, spin right up there at 6.7. So the interesting thing for me, like I said, is I'm not personally getting the distance. We've not gone through a lengthy fit process with this. I've stuck a shaft in that I normally like, and I am a bit surprised, but club head speed, like I said, what was that down to? Just under 80 mile an hour, so a couple of mile an hour slower than normal. I would expect it to be carrying just a little bit further, but the interesting thing really so far is just how high that towering ball flight is, how good that spin number is. Distance wise, just a little bit down on what I'd expect. Again, just a little bit left, I think. Cutting back a tad, but almost identical to the shot that I've just played. Mr. Green left, kick down into the bunker. That's like a mirror image of the other one. Right, we'll get to dry ball data. And don't forget the question in this video is, did I make a mistake by missing, leaving rather T300 out of my top five most forgiving eyes of 2021? And we will get to my answer very, very shortly. Dry ball data wise, I'm gonna do this again very, very quickly. The one surprise you'll see there is the carry distance. Like I said, it was pretty much down. I think it was a 150 carry. I've got the numbers in front of me now. 150 carry, which was, you know, again, more what I would say traditional, if you like, in terms of uh, a seven iron. But the positives I take from it are this. It launched extremely high, which again would fit that game improvement category. That's what you're wanting in terms of help and assistance. The spin number was incredibly consistent. When struck properly, the spin number and control was fantastic. So it ticked lots of boxes in that respect. Outside, sound and feel, superb. Top line, fairly hefty at address. So it kind of like, it's confused me a little bit because the one thing you would expect from a most forgiving iron, this category, it also becomes a distance iron. And it wasn't a distance iron. So it, have they got this, the question is, maybe to you, is I've tightly got this spot on where they've produced an iron that produces traditional numbers, if you like, but in this category, is it really what you're looking for? Are you want help assistance? Are you want ball speeds for slower swing speeds? Because if you did, then I was swinging below 80 mile an hour today with a seven iron. That's a relatively slower swing speed for me. Did I get the ball speeds that I wanted? I don't know really. I don't know whether it carried what I would expect it to, but again, that balance between launch, spin, and distance are all about what you're looking for from your ball flight, from your irons and what you're looking at. But I would think that, did I make a mistake? Well, it would have certainly gone into that top five. I'm not sure as to where. Do I think it's better than the DCB and the 921 hot metal? No, I don't. It kind of sits in there similar to me, to that uh, tailor-made SIM product, uh, SIM Max 2 that was. So yeah, maybe I made a mistake in not putting it in, but the point is, it's another great option in terms of a game improvement iron that looks really good, plays phenomenal and sounds good as well. So uh, yeah, I missed it off. I hadn't tried it. Definitely worth adding to the list and definitely worth you lot giving it a try. 
Right, as ever, thank you for watching. Don't forget, subscribe. If you don't already, hit that thumbs up button. And more importantly, give me your comments down below because these videos, as this one, is influenced by the feedback that you give me. You wanted this one included. I've done it. Any more suggestions, then by all means, stick it in that comments down below and I will uh, look to get those videos done. I'll see you all soon.